So the uh, automotive part of my van, as you see, is this 2015 Toyota Hilux. Uh, this one's my first four-wheel drive Hilux, and I like the colour. I can't find enough nice things to say about the Hilux, really. It's, it's, it will pretty much go anywhere. I've used various four-wheel drives in the course of my work. Land Rovers, Toyotas, Nissans, you name it. We've, we've used them at one time or another, either rented or owned. And um, Hilux is as good as any of them and better than many in terms of off-road performance. But it's really quite a uh, relatively sophisticated thing to drive on the road these days. And, as Top Gear proved, very hard to kill. They're a bit thirsty as pickup trucks go. Not the thirstiest, but not the um, frugalist either. Um, but that's partly because they are built so tough. There's lots of redundancy. The sump is huge, so uh, you don't need to change the oil as often as you might have to. The chassis is, is overbuilt, so they're really stiff, really tough. Um, fuel tank is enormous. Uh, up until the current model they always had two batteries, so plenty of juice for spinning the engine. Everything's just over-engineered and redundant. This one came with off-road tyres or all-terrain tyres, which is rather good because it's what I would have chosen. And as you can see, the camper sits in the back and clamps on. Fits rather neatly within the tub on this new model Hilux. And the only sort of extension to it required is, is this step that I've added onto the tow bar to help me get in and out of the door. So the camper itself is all glass fibre. Things to note on the outside, uh, looking down in here you can see that uh, the well, if I if I come to this side, you can see that the um, top part of the camper is wider than the bottom part, and in fact, it's narrower again for the forward because it has to fit past the wheel arches in order to fit in there. Uh, so the only places you can really get at the camper are at the back where the door is, and then above the waistline. So the water tank entrance is up here. The tank itself is down lower down but the, the the filler for the water tank is up here uh, what else there's an outlet for the fridge here here's the gas locker which is a bit small you can only fit in one um, camping gas 907 here's the inlet for mains electricity actually that's about it you get a window on each side you get this nice big uh, sort of French window at the back which is your main entry and exit door, well your only entry and exit door really, and these two windows at the side which also act as fire escapes should you need them, and a big window in the space over the cab which is pretty much redundant because you can't sensibly sleep up there and it tends to leak. Mine is not leaking at the moment because it's recently been resealed. And then uh, on the roof is two skylights which pop up and give you loads of ventilation should you need it. So we're set up on a campsite in Germany at the moment. Here's Mr. Bailey coming to see what I'm up to. Here's my Brompton folding bike, which fits inside very nicely. And there's Bailey's uh, water bowl. What are you up to? He's obsessed with fetching stuff. So let's have a look inside. So I'll step up the step. And inside you can see mostly the accommodation consists of these two long benches. A considerable space over the cab which I use for storing stuff. On the left side we get sink, fridge, more storage just inside the door and on the right side is my stove and more storage and more storage up above and uh, there's some tea brewing in that teapot which I am just about to consume. You will notice that uh, my van is plugged into something and this is uh, my mains lead which goes into a, an inlet on the van here and then trundles off and goes into um, something plugged into not this box but another box very like it over there where there's meters and switches and fuses and all that kind of stuff and this means that I can have mains electricity inside my van so I've got a socket here which I can use for a heater or computers or all the general things that you generally plug in 
some sites have um, limited current draw, and if you draw too much, uh, a, a breaker somewhere trips and, and, a, and a, a warden comes and moans at you. So you have to be a little bit thoughtful and, and not power, you know, too many high current thingies, but by and large people don't. And then at the back of the van, uh, tucked away, you see in the corner, you can see my fan heater. Um, and I can run that at 600 watts or something and it warms the van very nicely and has never yet tripped any circuit breaker on any site anywhere. So there's another socket at that end of the van and I, when I'm plugged into the mains I can use my fan heater as well. And um, the main supply also powers um, the, the charger. Oh, in this little locker here is a Zig charger. It's got a little mini consumer unit, just like your house has, and connected into it is this Zig charger, which charges the battery, which powers everything else in the van. So indirectly, when I'm on the mains, I also get my 12 volt lights, which are ooh, up on the ceiling here. So those are LEDs, and they uh, they also run on the 12 volt system, but they're running off the mains indirectly, as long as I'm plugged in. Also on the main side of the van, is the fridge which has a mains element so it will keep cool on mains power when I'm plugged in and there's an isolator for it here and this little red light tells me it's working nicely now. When I'm not on mains power I've still got 12 volt power and I can power the fridge from that. Now the fridge draws quite a heavy current so the fridge is wired up so that the fridge only draws 12 volts when the engine's running and there's lots of power available. Excuse me. Otherwise, it needs to run on gas, and that's fine. That's not, not a problem. It works really well on gas. At all times, the 12 volts available include this little 12 volt socket here, and the lights, and the water pump, and the um, gas heater electrics are on the 12 volt side, so they also work when I'm off the grid. And, and this is an addition all of my own, in this locker down here, is an 800 watt or 1600 watt peak inverter and when this is plugged in and switched on i have an additional ooh, main socket ooh, an additional main socket excuse me an additional main socket here which is powered from the inverter so even when i'm miles away from any main supply i can still charge phones computers run computers and televisions and all that kind of thing if they require 240 volts from that separate socket, which probably ought to be labelled, but I've never got around to it. It's my van, it's my socket, I know what it does, so that's all right. And anyway, when it's not plugged into anything, it doesn't work, so that's all right. So I hope this has been of some interest and that uh, you're reassured that I'm not living in a horrible, cold, damp, dark, mouldy, food-free uh, environment when I'm living in my van, because I'm not. It's really quite pleasant. I wouldn't spend so much time in it if I didn't like it and where it can take me. And if you're enjoying this and if you're watching on YouTube um, and you'd like to see more of this sort of stuff, well then leave a comment in the usual place and tell me what more you'd like to know, what you'd like to see. And of course you've got to like and subscribe and share and all that kind of social media stuff as well. And then I'll be encouraged to do more. And if you're not watching on YouTube, well, you can still do all the, the liking and that business. And comments are always good. Yeah, so uh, bye for now, Bailey. Pop up and say goodbye, would you? Up, 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 up. Come on, up, up.